Hi, I'm Drex from DrexFactor.com. Many moons ago, a friend of mine signed up to support me via Patreon with the request that I do videos on how to dance with props. And when I say many moons ago, I really mean about two years ago. I've made many attempts at doing dance and flow arts fusion tutorials, but I've never gotten very far with them. One of the biggest reasons being that I am not qualified to teach dance. I'm still very much figuring it out myself, and the process by which I've learned hasn't been a linear step-by-step -step process like Poi was. So starting with this video, what I'm going to do is a monthly video blog in which I explore topics in flow arts and dance fusion. These aren't intended to be too tutorials, but explorations that I do with you guys. Hopefully, after a while, we'll both find that we've learned something. So with all that out of the way, today's topic is going to be two concepts in dance that sometimes complement each other and sometimes compete with each other. These concepts are shapes and momentum. Let's define these concepts first. When I say shapes, what I mean is the tendency of the body to find interesting orientations that create negative space, angles, interesting lines, and just all-around striking movements. Momentum is the exploration of movement, starting and redirecting movement in different directions on different planes and seeing how it evolves with the body. Sometimes it can be one continuous continuous movement that has a clearly defined beginning and ending, and sometimes it can be a wild cacophony of movement that seems to put the artist on the very edge of control. I think it's safe to say that most flow artists, and especially those of us who spin flexible tools like Poi, Dart, and Meteor, are almost always drawn to the first type of movement. The reasons for this are very simple. First, much of what we do with our props is centered around creating interesting shapes anyway. We like to create anti-spin flowers, third-order motions, hybrids, and many more, but all of these concepts are built around the shapes that we create with our tools when we spin them. Moving our bodies around in such a way that they create shapes then is a really easy concept for us to understand. Second, it creates a stable base from which to perform a trick. Building shapes more often than not grounds us in ways that don't actively make performing a trick any more difficult. We have the best of both worlds, orienting our bodies in interesting ways while still doing all the cool tricks that we've devoted so much time and effort to. Finally, there's definitely something to be said for the contrast between rapidly moving props and a slowly moving or outright still body, but it's also very limiting. One of the biggest challenges I had when I decided to formally learn dance was how to carry momentum through my body. To this day, I almost always think of choreography as a collection of shapes I attempt to get to and movement transitions between them. It makes my choreography feel very forced and not very smooth. It also means it takes vastly more effort for me to complete a phrase than it does for other dancers who have a more traditional dance background. If there were one thing I could change about how I dance, it would absolutely be this. Well, okay, maybe flexibility first, but definitely this second. Momentum is one of those things that engages an audience not just in the moment that they're currently experiencing, but also creates anticipation for what happens next. As long as a dancer is moving and has momentum, you know that there is something in the phrase still to come. It also allows you to create tricks that aren't possible in static positions. There are things you can do with your body that are only possible by redirecting momentum. Jumps from a static position look flat and lifeless. Those that are assisted by movement beforehand are much more dynamic. So how can you add momentum to your movement? Here are a couple exercises I've played with that might make good examples. First, just moving from side to side of a stage does so much to make a performance engaging by using the stage itself as a canvas to be painted. One of my favorite ways to do this is to imagine that my hips are drawing a series of loops as they move from one side of the stage to the other. Second, building corkscrew-like movements. As you execute turns around your body, you can build from lower levels up to higher levels, culminating in jumps or pirouettes. Third, redirecting momentum. One of those things that's been incredibly difficult for me to process as a flow artist has been that you can start momentum in one plane and then transfer it to a different plane. This is mainly because it's so difficult to do this with poi and make it look good. Your body is a different story entirely. Try starting in a vertical plane, and after it reaches an apex, have it descend in a horizontal plane. Think of movement that curves over, that spills out, that bounces back and forth. Think about how that momentum begins and ends. It can be startling just to have a movement stop abruptly. Or use that momentum to tell a story that has a clear beginning, middle, and end. Use it to define a relationship or create a feeling. Momentum is hard to make work with props, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. So I hope this gives some of you guys some interesting ideas or places to start exploring. This is a thing that I wrestle with constantly. I think ideally good dance mixes up the use of beautiful shapes with momentum. The two complement each other well, but I also see a fair amount of the former in flow arts dance and almost none of the latter. Here's hoping we can change that. If you're interested in exploring more dance with your flow, I highly recommend you find a local studio and take lessons. It's intimidating and it can be incredibly challenging, but the things you'll learn are absolutely irreplaceable. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the flow. Peace. Hey there, thanks so much for watching my video. If you got anything out of it, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to help it grow. Special thanks to all of my wonderful backers on Patreon. You guys are the ones that make these videos possible. If you're not a current backer and would like to sign up to support my channel, please visit patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. Thanks so much in advance.